all of these issues that we have and Americans are like sitting at their kitchen table working three jobs. Literally, the, there is no middle class. They're literally mm. trying to work three jobs and you hear on the news that they're giving Ukraine. Nobody gives a fuck about them. Funny how. Come here, come here though. Yeah, he's crazy, see? Who are you? Yeah, man, it looks good. It looks like you're you in your bunker or what? You getting ready for it? <laughs> oh, dude, I've been ready for that. <laughs> I love it, man. Dude, yeah. hey, hey, listen, man, I know you're busy. I appreciate you taking the time. Um, of course. Yeah, we, we've been wanting to connect for a while. And uh, yeah, I'm just glad you're on, man, because I, I love your content like most uh, Americans. I, uh, I find relatability to a lot of the stuff you do. And I always like to have people on my podcast that uh, not just necessarily... I don't know if you looked at my other videos, but it's a lot of health, wellness, social media. I talk about yeah. a lot of objective conversations. So I just, I just like to shoot the shit. I'm not a big fan of, you know, talking about one specific topic because I think as the years yeah. evolved, as do we, and you know, things change and stuff. So it's it's refreshing to see someone like yourself that just speaks their mind. So appreciate. Well, the thank you. I appreciate that, and I can talk about literally anything. Um, <laughs> Yeah, we have been wanting to connect for a while, but my manager wanted to, is like, he's like, you need to like go on like a schedule. Like you need a, a shared calendar. We need it. Yeah. And, and it, it's so like now it's like times. Yeah, dude. Times. Yeah. So yeah, I'm which good is, now. No? Yeah, it's a good problem to have. Right? Yeah, yeah it's not a bad problem. That's for yeah. Because sure. <laughs> you're uh, you're local. I mean, maybe down the road we can we can connect in person because you're. I I'm would in, love that. I was yeah. going to say, where are you at? So I'm in uh, Apollo Beach, a little bit north here, okay. but it's kind of, um, it's about 20 miles south of um, Tampa. So, oh, dude, I like yeah. Tampa's like an hour and cha an hour and 45. Yeah, because you're come on, what, down Cape, here, come, Cape Coral. Cape Coral, that's right. Yeah, yeah. come down here and we'll, we'll bust out some content for a couple of days. Fuck yeah, dude, I'm down. Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've kind of been taking it easy on some content. I just got, uh, I'm creating a, a bunch of different content for a few clients that I have. Because I'm a I'm a content creator and podcast coach, so I've been super busy just the last couple of months. But we, me and my wife had a uh, a baby about six months ago, so I've congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So I've had so no of, sleep. Literally, <laughs> like, oh my god, it's insane. It's it's true what they say. Like there's, and I don't know about you, because it seems like you got a good energetic personality like I do, and I feel like obviously 24 hours is not enough time in the day, um, but when I am up, I'm up. Like, um, you know what I mean? But when you're sleep deprived with a baby, it's different than like, I, I could do all nighters. I could stay up 24 yeah. hours and you know what I mean? But when you are sleep deprived with a child, it is like that six hours of sleep that you think you get is not a real six hours of sleep. It's fascinating. The difference. It's crazy. It's, oh, my it's God. crazy. Yeah. So it's, it's been fun, but I've had been, you know, to push back on my content, my guy calendar, it's been, it's been a nightmare, but yeah, I'd love to yeah. go down there. Me, me and the wife, uh, we've been looking to take a little day trip somewhere. Cool. Um, so obviously because you're in Florida, probably a big reason why you, sh you have such strong beliefs. Um, and I say beliefs, it's so funny because when I have these conversations with my liberal friends, they're always like, uh, you know, these, these beliefs and these beliefs, and I go, they're not really beliefs. I mean, they're just kind of like principles that we should yeah. all live by as human beings. Yeah, like common sense principles. Yeah. You would think. But dude, that's such a crazy thought. Common sense? That's insane. Why would we have... They lack things? that. <laughs> a lot of them do. Yeah. I, I definitely have... I, I've i lost relationships over the years. I'm sure like maybe you have or a lot of other friends that I've talked yeah. to. But there's been tensions between my friends and I. And social media doesn't help, of course. It's weird because I... I've recently had like Facebook friend requests from people that I thought I was friends with like a long time ago. And then they're <laughs> added. And I was like, oh, I see what happened here. It's so a they, no for me. Reject. <laughs> yeah. So they took you off and then now they're like, oh, he's got some followers. So let me go ahead and follow him. Again. Oh, not only he's got some followers, but everything you said was right. <laughs> and so now I feel like a dipshit, but yeah. Yeah, it's it's crazy, man. And for me as a creator, I've done even during the pandemic, I did these podcasts where I would talk about not necessarily because I knew how squirrely it was. I see a lot of other podcasters get canceled over it. So I was kind of being careful. 
but I ended up getting a bunch of strikes from YouTube and my videos removed. And, you know, you only get three strikes on YouTube. So now I have two strikes, but turns out what I was talking about, which I don't want to get into now, but what I was talking about was turns out to be correct now. You know, we talk about masks and vaccines and all that. So I talked about that, just questioning and not really like, I just had some experts on talking about it, mainly nutritionists and talking about vitamin D deficiency and, and all that. And that shot should be kind of the last resort. It turns out though, that wasn't okay to say. So it got removed, but then it's not like they added it back to my YouTube now, now that it's, it's been proven to be No, true. you already got, you already got the ding. I got the, ding. got the ding. So walk me through kind of, cause I've been following you for a while, but walk me through yeah. kind of the evolution of your content, how this started. Currently, are you are you working in healthcare? I see that. Or are you just partnered up with? No, I'm. I'm literally. They sponsor me. I do videos for them. I oh, cool. So they 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 pay me how they pay me. Um, That's great. Yeah. Are we lo- like? Are, are, is this part of the show? Is yeah, we're recording? recording. I don't. Uh, I just okay, get into so you, it. Okay. Cool. <laughs> okay. So yeah. I mean, it, so it's a whole. It's a whole thing, right? So I, ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to be in entertainment. I've always, wa- I was always that kid that was, I'm the same now that I was as a kid, right? but as, but I was a kid with kid mentality, That's right. uh, but I never went to school for journalism. I never went into like acting school or anything like that. But when I was in my early thirties, I was like, okay, I'm going to go to Illinois media school. I'm going to go to broadcasting school. I want to learn podcasting. I want to maybe be a reporter or something in that field. Nice. Long story short, Donald Trump was president at the time. I voted for Donald Trump and they had found out that Tucker Carlson was one of my favorite journalists. And they literally told me that that was weird. And if I didn't open my mind to liberal journalism, that I would never make it in the industry. Oh, so I said, uh, I feel super uncomfortable. You, I, you don't ever bring me into your office again, asking me why I chose you asked me to choose one of my favorite journalists. It was Tucker Carlson. So they pretty much, I feel like they kind of blackballed me a little bit. So then COVID happened. So I, 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 whatever, I got my certificate in broadcasting. I thought I was never going to do anything with it. I was completely just diminished. Like I was felt this big. And I was like, what a waste of money. And then COVID happened and I had noticed that we were locked down. Fine. We were trying to do all the things right. Flatten the curve. But then all these thousands of people were parading in the streets, not parading. They were burning down cities in protest of something else. Well, I couldn't understand how this was being allowed but my friends can go see their grandparents or my friends can go to their brother's funeral or my brother and sister-in-law's wedding was canceled for the second, second, third time. Right. And then you're, and I'm seeing politicians going in and get their haircuts, but we couldn't go and get our haircuts. So I literally, bro, I sat at the kitchen table, like an Italian, like straight Cause I'm off the boat Italian. Nice. I had the phone set up. I slammed my hands on the table really hard. And I'm like, I can't take this shit no more. Like, I'm so done with this. This is garbage. So I posted on TikTok. I woke up the next day and the video went just viral. And so my other half was like, this, you, this is what you need to do. You need to do like the yeah. ant rant. Yeah. Yeah. You need to continue doing this. So it started off actually at the kitchen table, most of my videos. And I'm like, listen. And I would slam my hands on the table. Like that was the original ant stuff. Well, then when all the other stuff started coming, like me tapping the bottom of my glass and stuff, that was like niches that I normally do in life. They just ended up in videos. And then my followers were like, oh my God, I love that. And I was mm. like, okay, now I'm seeing what you guys like. No, um, and then <laughs> continued and continued. And here we are. I love it. And you know, again, this is what's so beautiful about, there's a lot of problems with social media. I think we all could agree with that. But this is the beautiful thing in particular I like about TikTok, what it's created. By the way, there is so many fucking funny people on the planet. And I feel like TikTok has allowed us to kind of be our true selves. Uh, Very similar to like how Vine was, if you remember Vine, where it was like you only get that seven to 10 seconds, but you would follow that person based off that 10 seconds because it was hysterical. And you're like, Mm -hmm. it's unscripted. It's, you know, it's, you're not adding a filter to it. Like Instagram has been for 15 years. 
It's just, it's, it yeah. allows you to be your true self. And if people like you, great. And if they don't fuck off, but it, it's, it's very, it's comfortable to be able to do that, um, as a creative and as a human being, I mean, just to hop on the internet, say something funny and. Well, I, I agree. And I feel like it gave people an outlet in the sense of like, I was that little boy that always wanted to be in on TV as an entertainer. And I always remember watching all of these shows and like reciting them back like word for word for my parents at right. after dinner and my mom would be like go and do that go and do that part from that movie show your father show your father and i'd go down the hall and then come back out and like do all the things yeah. well you never thought that you would get a fair shot right because hollywood kind of had this golden ticket all the time you know right. it was like somebody that they knew or their dad was a producer or their family was always in hollywood so we would never get in there yeah but now people are kind of tired with that and, and they really don't want to hear what Hollywood has to say politically on either side. Yeah. So everyone's kind of like, ah, I'm, I'm done. And so people like us and journalism has changed and podcasting in the world of radio when you have Joe Rogan and all these great people that, yeah. start, you know, um, comedians that start off as just normal people. That's right. But it made us go viral. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I new faces. Yeah. And I think people wanted, I think we always wanted to see that, but there was never, again, I, I always bring up TikTok because even Zuck, I think came out and said something along the lines of when the Biden laptops came out, right? It was, uh, the FBI told Zuckerberg, I think he admitted this on Joe Rogan's podcast where Facebook was told by the FBI, Hey, this is a hundred percent factual. This is true. Push this story out, cancel everything else. And they did it because, you know, Zuckerberg, mm -hmm. for whatever reason, you could say he's He's hooked in the claws or not. But at the end of the day, if the FBI is telling you something, you would believe it. I would imagine. You so would you would think you would have to. And, you know, turns out, obviously, that <laughs> fucking crook. <laughs> so so now we have all this stuff getting pushed by these platforms. We believed in 20 years, the last 20 years they've been here has been like our news. Like for a while, I used Facebook and Twitter as like get the up to date news. But then turns out. There's an ideology behind that. And mm -hmm. what TikTok has done was it's had it's given you the ability to look at guys like Tucker that won't get canceled. Thank goodness for Elon for putting them out on X. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, it's it's these other platforms that have really got gotten us the consumer the opportunity to look at all these different sides of things and allow us to kind of come up with our own conclusion. You know, mm -hmm. that's that's the difference between I think TikTok versus those other social media platforms is you know. Yeah, it really, and look, TikTok is great because it it's, it gives you the ability to just quickly post those short videos with awesome quality and awesome, awesome uploading availability and totally. then the music and all that stuff. I, you know, as, as somebody who is conservative in, in most of my following is going to be mostly right leaning, you know, they're like, oh, you know, platforms like TikTok and da, 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 it's a China based app, they're spying on you. I gotta break it to you. If you think everything has been spying on you since a decade or more ago, yeah. then I mean, you literally would have to lock yourself in a bunker dungeon because your your laptop, your desktop, they have they have the the camera on them right now. I'm yeah. sure. Hi, I'm sure my FBI yeah. is staring at me. Um, you know, you should probably put a post-it note over it. Your smart yeah. TVs everywhere you go in the world whether it's on the roadways, in a store, anywhere has a camera on on you. So you're being, and your phone in general, whether it's oh, yeah. Android or iPhone, it tracks you, it knows what you're doing, it knows where you're at. For God's sakes, I'll talk about something and it'll show up on my Facebook an hour later. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, what I have to say to those people that, that are critical on these Chinese spy apps, is you're being spied on by both the U United States, China, every entity around the world. You already are doing that unless you don't deal with technology in general. But we're also reaching out to the younger generation that is not our parents. That's right. It's not the it's it's the generation that this is what they use. This is yeah. this is how we're going to bridge the gap and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I love the people that always say like. <laughs> this is what's so interesting. I was talking about this on my last podcast with a doctor. Um, and we're just kind of have a conversation about everything that happened with the pandemic and how we were blaming a lot of other countries and, you know, all the shitty stuff that happened to people that live in America that 
have Chinese uh, backgrounds. It's just it's it's interesting how as Americans, it's great to have the fucking we're the best. We're number one, you know, make America great. We've been the greatest in 1776. Like, that's great to have. But it's also like, and I'd love to know your opinion on this, especially when you're on the conservative side, kind of like I'm more in the middle, I think, um, as of late, but I definitely lean more right. And I've always had the belief of like, we're not the best with a lot of things. We're great at 80% of the stuff we do. Healthcare, big opportunity, right? We need to work on that. Where our taxes go, I could talk all day on that. But there's a lot of other countries that are doing a lot better for its citizens. You know, Italy, right? You're Italian, so am I. I got a lot of buddies in Rome. And they're the first country to ban processed foods. Mm, that's a big one. That's a huge one. Now, the rest of their government is a corrupt fuck. I was going to say that. I was going to say that because I was just in Italy in July. I was just oh, okay. That. Yeah. So yeah. it's like, you know, again, is Italy the best? No. But also America is not the best either. You know, everyone that's bashing TikTok in China Look at the back of every single product that you have. It says made in China. So chill the fuck out. Relax. Well, that's what I'm saying. Literally anything that you pick up nowadays, right. you know, I mean, you would re really have, I mean, you would be a minimalist if you tried to find anything that was just American made. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, is there pros and cons to that? Yeah, of course. You know, but, but that's the great thing with this world as a whole is our ancestors worked very, very hard to try to make the peace for this import and export to happen. And again, it's up to our our leaders. I, I right now I use that word very loosely, but <laughs> but you know it's it's up to uh, Biden. Ugh. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get a better guy in office. But it's up to these folks to really bridge that gap and keep it civil. It's never going to be perfect, but to implement those other. But for for you as an American citizen to not look at other countries and say, hey, you know what, Canada, they're kind of shitty at healthcare, but there's some good things that they're doing in healthcare. You know, we have the best surgeons and the best doctors and all that, but it also costs a lot of money to have a baby. There's other countries that let you have a baby for free. So there is a happy median. So for us to bash Russia and to bash China like we do, especially our leadership, is so irresponsible because that trickles down to the citizens thinking that, you know, the grass isn't greener on the other side. The Mecca, we're the most successful, yada, yada, yada. But also, there's a lot of stupid things we're doing. And- if you as a citizen don't educate yourself on everything that's happening in the world, don't just stay in this bubble of like, you know, that's the problem with liberals, right? Is they're in this little bubble and they think everything is honky dory and perfect and they need to change inside this bubble and let's help out everyone else. Um, but we're not really helping our, our citizens well, that way. Yeah. Well, there, well, so there's a lot of points to touch. So, liberals are virtue signalers what that's what they mm. do they need everybody to know that they care about everything it's me um they, yeah they <laughs> need everybody to know that they have a gay friend they need everybody to know that they have a black friend they have they need everybody to know that they support ukraine so that's right. on the liberal thing um and i'm a recovering liberal but i still see myself as a sane liberal where i'm like i'm very conservative in a lot of aspects, but I still respect people as a whole and I want everybody to have their civil liberties and I want everybody to be able to do what they want. So yeah. with that being said, you look at Italy. Mm -hmm. I'd rather take the health aspects, meaning these people are living to a hundred plus years old and smoking, mind you, bro, smoking cigarettes like it's going out of style there. They're yeah. still living in the 80s. I'm yeah. telling you right now, okay? And I was just there. every day. Every day. I'm talking about 16-year-olds out of getting out of school, all sitting at a cafe, drinking beer, smoking cigarettes. Nobody's flinching. Okay? Mm. But these people live so long because I can't tell you, oh my god, my family fed us so much food. There was so much and we never gained a pound. Mm -hmm. Never gained a pound. So the, in that aspect, yes. But now if you want to go see a doctor there, good luck. Yeah. Good luck because they don't care because yeah. they have a universal healthcare system. They really don't give a shit. But you can walk into any pharmacy without a doctor's prescription and you can get whatever you need. So there's also that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that people need to look at other countries as as this. It's like 
Americans like to look at other countries and be like, oh my God, look at Russia. They treat their people like shit. But what the, what do you care? Yeah. Those people's culture is this certain way. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's just like you look at people in Saudi Arabia or whatever, right? Yeah. The United Emirates, like Dubai, it's like one of, in the Middle East, it's like one of the most prosperous, uh, actually in their, in their culture, in that part of the world, it's like the most free in yeah. a sense, yeah. but their culture mentality is that women are made, are supposed to stay in the house. Women still, if a husband is driving a car there, the women have to still sit in the back seat. Do you know that? Yeah. I heard that. Who I didn't know it was true. Though. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I'm on Dubai talk right now. Don't right. ask. <laughs> so don't ask. But, but you learn a lot. Disclaimer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you learn a lot. You yeah. learn a lot from watching these other countries and stuff. But who am I as an American to say, oh my God, that's what, worry about yourself. Yeah. That's that country. If those people don't like what's going on in that country, then legally they'll figure out a way to move yeah. to another country. Until right. then, it's not your problem. Yeah, that's right. And you know, th- this is also kind of going back to that point is this is the issue with everyone thinking, you know, and I love to talk about this, the open border thing. Um, we need to help every single country, everything that's happened with Ukraine and Gaza. It, I, I saw an unbelievable video. I'll try to clip it if I find it, but it's this uh, professor talking about the gumballs of immigrants. Have okay. you seen this? Mm-mm. I'll try to send it to you when I can. But he talks about the worldwide, the amount of immigrants that are just out and about, people trying to cross, not just America. But the point essentially was, if you live in a country that's shitty, the only way for that country to get better is for its citizens to get better, to find resources to make that country better, and then the country will flourish. That's how America became America. You know, it took 300 years to get where we are, obviously, but at the end of the day, that's the only way to do it. The, the solution is not to let everyone in America, you know, and, and again, coming from guys that my, my family is Italian as well. I mean, they came from the boat. I get it. But also they came from the boat two people ago. So yeah. it was a different time 200 years ago. You know, we're like in 500 years, are we still going to be letting in 100,000 people every single month? No. Right. Like, you, I mean, you can't. Yeah. You got to cut it off at some point. It's it's no different than the whole Ukraine thing. I, I was talking to a buddy and we were in this argument about, listen, 20 years ago, I think a lot of people would be less pissed off about the whole Ukraine thing. We have places like Chicago, New York, California that are literally crumbling and our government is spending more money on other countries than ours. Now, we we could talk about the NATO thing and all that, but at the end of the day, again, I look at it like, and if you're in a relationship and we're struggling, me and my wife, and you come up to me and you're like, hey, Tone, I got to borrow a couple thousand, dude. It's it's for me and my partner. Listen, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it to you back, but I got to borrow it today. If me and my wife are struggling, what am I going to say? Dude, I love you, but fuck off. Like, there's no way. There's no way I'm going to let you borrow money. We're doing that every single day, and you got guys in south of Chicago getting shot up every 20 seconds. Like, let's fix the shitty parts of our country first, because if, again, going back to that gumball analogy, if we fix those shitty parts, we're going to get better humans, more jobs, more money, and eventually we'll fix the economy. But the fact that we're spending so much money everywhere else is well, crazy. So two thi- yeah, so two things. So on that point... Have you ever heard of one of these other countries, NATO countries, saying, oh, we're going to borrow, we're going to give the United States $400 billion because they seem like they need help. Have you ever heard anybody else say that to us? Never. No. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I, I also think that if we were in a time or an economy, like you said before with Ukraine, if we were in a time where our veterans were taken care of. All of our children in inner city schools had could depend on a lunch every day and go to school every day and be safe every day in a safe environment with a safe house and all that stuff. Even if it was 60% of Americans, which is way more than it is now, okay? Mm-hmm. And that's a big portion of Americans. Yeah. 
Even if it was 30%, let's go with 30%. No, really, because yeah. I think that a lot of people are struggling. I think it's more than 50% are struggling right now. So yeah. if we were in a, in a, a financial set where it was like, all right, Americans are thriving. We have food. We have this. We have jobs. We're like, everything's great. I don't think we would have a problem with helping Ukraine or no. Ukrainians. But when you have all of these issues that we have and Americans are like sitting at their kitchen table working three jobs. Literally, the, there is no middle class. They're literally mm -hmm. trying to work three jobs and you hear on the news that they're giving Ukraine. Nobody gives a fuck about them. <laughs> right. Nobody yeah. gives a fuck about them. Nobody gives a fuck about anybody else. Yeah. Besides their house. Yeah. And nobody ever from those countries at any part of my life, and I'm 39 years old, has mm -hmm. ever said here, how, how much, how much, oh, 35 billion? Oh, I'll give you 35.5. Yeah, there we go, 36. And wrote the check to the United States. When has that ever happened? Yeah. Bro, that's, that's such an interesting point because, again, it's not like these countries that we're helping are saying, you know what? Have you guys looked at like California lately? Maybe we should help out California. So, you know, I, I tell you what, let's just pull, let's just print money because that's all we're doing. Let's just print money. We'll give it to America and they can just mm -hmm. hand it off to California. No, yeah. but instead. Oh, wait, wait. Wait, before I forget. Hold oh, on, okay, I'm so sorry. Before I forget, that was a good point because I said, the border is a good point because we're giving money to Ukraine to protect their border. Meanwhile, is Ukraine or is any of these other mothers saying, oh, we're going to give you money for, because you guys have a lot of people coming in. I'm sure some of them are from our countries. Let's, no. Let's help out. Yeah. No. No. And, you know, again, this is just a funny thing where, thank goodness for social media, because I feel like if this was to happen again 20 years ago, and we didn't have the means to learn this information as a whole, imagine how we would get our information. You know, like back in the day, again, I, we talk about Russia, but Russia was the bad guy in every movie, right? In yeah. Rocky, it was Drago, right? And yes. fucking yeah. Balboa was taking him down, right? Because Russia yeah. is a fucking, they're animals. That's a good impression. Oh, thanks. But, <laughs> but really, Russia is not that bad. I mean, yeah. you know, for the Russians, they're not happy, of course. But in terms of like, us caring so much about how they treat their citizens, we need to mind our own fucking business. Yeah, and are they not that happy? I mean, I'm sorry, but there's, I follow a content creator. When I find him, I'm gonna send him to you. He's an okay. expatriate. He used to live in the United States and now he lives in Russia. And he's literally walking the streets and showing all, like exposing all is it, of the- is it, is it Snowden? <laughs> No, no, but this guy is showing, like, he's walking yeah. through the train station like like, um, like Tucker Carlson did. And yeah. Everything's clean. There's no homeless people on the streets. Do I agree with how they run their laws or how they have, what laws they have? No, but that, again, it's not my business. They're like, oh, they right. don't even like your kind in Russia. What, they don't like gay people in Russia? I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I don't live in Russia. But I'm saying... Yeah. You know, by the United States or people putting sanctions, uh, us putting sanctions on them, it's like, but you're putting sanctions on them. Do you think they give a fuck? Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah. No. They and don't. no, they don't. And not only that, but again, you always think about, well, what are we doing wrong in America? And just like Russia, let's say if there's 20 things that they have to do, right? And Putin has to do, let's say there's 20 things, and he's really good at like four of them, but then the other 16, he's a total putz. Okay. What about America? What's our scale? Okay. So if there's 20 things we have to get good at, it it's kind of the same. We might be good at like five or six things. We might be good at like, you know, big surgeries, like if you need lung surgery or a knee surgery or something like that, but we're shitty at stem cell research. We don't allow that to go down. Pharmaceutical drugs, we suck at, Right. Healthcare, garbage. I mean, guns. Yeah, great. You can have a gun in some states. But so that's the thing is like, there's also no, it's so fascinating when you really dive into it is you have a president, but really that president could pass any law they want, but then each state gets to do whatever the fuck they want to do. Yeah. It was funny that Vladimir Putin was like, I don't understand that. 
It makes no sense. <laughs> and he, so why and are you he, the president? And he has the, yeah, and he has the biggest country in the world. Yeah, in the world. Yeah, why do you have a president? I don't know. There's there's little presidents in fifty different states, and then and then you have different precincts depending on cities, and That's then right. you have different towns, and it's like people in other countries can't fathom it. It's either we're no. running the whole shit. Or of course you need an administration and a board and all, of course, yeah, of course, yeah. of course, of course. But yeah, it, the way our government works is so is so janky. But I, you know, and then and then I sit there, man, and I, I the other day, you know, like a week later after Tucker did this interview, which was, I I think everybody on the left and the right should watch this interview and form your own it's opinion. Really I don't think there's anything wrong with that, and I'm not a Russian sympathizer. I'm not saying that I'm a fan of Vladimir Putin or uh, anything like that. But, you know, it's definitely interesting. It's it's history in the making. You should watch it. But, you know, we had our cell phone outage here not too long ago, right? And then you have Fox News, who I believe is a propaganda machine as well, posting an interview now that they had with Zelensky, okay? And then you have a woman supposedly that they interviewed via Skype or whatever in a dilapidated bunker with full clarity on her phone, full service on her phone. And you want me to have sympathy for this person? And I'm thinking to myself, you're fucking kidding me, right? Like you're, you're joking. I can't go to the grocery store and call somebody because I have no service. Yeah. This this putana's got service? She's in a bunker. <laughs> She's in a bunker. This is a show, is what it is. Then you got this guy coming to the United States and saying, give me money on credit, and I then one day give you the money. How the fuck do I know you're going to pay me back? This seems like a thug situation. To me. Yeah. We're also, getting a shake down here. Also impression, spot on, by the way. Very good. <laughs> that was good. You yeah, crazy. Good. Uh, see, I'm yeah. telling you, good. That's a, that's good. a hard accent to do too. Yeah, man, <laughs> I, the, I, that concept doesn't make sense to me. It really doesn't. And, you know, the concept of like helping other countries just in general, now we're at the point, I don't think it would change. Like that's also the issue, not just with each state being individualized, which by the way, is ironic that we're the United States of America, but we can't agree on anything. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Like every, it's so weird. Like our forefathers would fucking slap us in the teeth if they oh, realized, yeah. you know what I mean? And also too, there's a lot of like different things that we are following that they'll probably look at us like, dude, you're, you're doing those same amendments. Like we wrote those 300 years ago with a feather. Like what? Like, how right. are you, how are you cop? It's so weird that we follow these same kind of like, um, structures like every four years, right. Is a present because by the time, like, again, I voted for Trump as well, but by the time he really got out of office, he was just getting going. You know what I mean? Like he was just, that's how things go. And by the time, if you want to take away like him in particular, but a lot of other, like Obama, when he was running again, right, for that second term, that last probably 18 months of his first term, he was focused on rerunning. Mm. So really, what did he have? Two and a half years in office where he really could get shit done? So by the time things get done, They'll get overturned again. And we go in this cycle of like Democrat, Republican, Democrat, Republican, Democrat. And then we're back. Yeah. And I think there's just something up top out of our control. Back in 1776, I'm sure they had like this great idea of doing this. But that's when there was what? 30,000 people in the country? Like, I don't know how many. You know what I mean? Now there's 33 million. Like, you can't do this whole two-party back and forth every four-year system. And then you have these jabronis in Congress that are able to stay on the seat for fucking 50 years. Like what? I mean, they're, I mean, Feinstein's eyeball was falling out. I mean, this is like right out of, this is right out of, it's, it's out of Comedy Central's cartoon division. Like <laughs> for these real. people are the dilapidated people. They're yeah. crypt keepers. Like I think, were, did they sign the declaration as well? Have they been alive for 300 years? It's insane. It looks, it looks it does like, like it. Yeah. I give credit to the younger people that are running in positions in office, like Vivek Ramaswamy. I, I, I'm not a, I'm not a hundred percent fan yeah. of his. I was more of a fan after he came forward for Trump and and stepped out. 
Um, even, I, it's very controversial, but even, like, I'm going to go on both sides of the aisle here. Even yeah. people like Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. Yes, I get it. She's not yeah. the brightest bulb in in the lamp. You know what I mean? Yeah. She's not the, but she is young. She can talk to young people. She's got flavor to her. She's, mm -hmm. she's with the times. She's That's with right. the, you know what I'm saying? You know, yeah. uh, Matt Gates and Lauren Bobar and like all of these younger people on both sides yeah. that I give them credit, but whether I agree with them or not, it doesn't really yeah. matter. What matters is, is that they're trying to have a voice for this generation because my parents, my grandparents, they don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Podcasts, I don't understand. Right. What is this? Monetization? You know, my grandma's like, I don't understand what it means. What do you mean you monetize? What does monetize mean? I go, <laughs> no, no, monetize. Okay, you make, it's like work. She goes, but you're not going nowhere. Are you going to make money? I'm like, okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. They don't understand. Out. They need to be out. Yeah. And, and, and these then, old people in Congress are trying to school us on social media stuff. Well, you don't and, even know what social media is. <laughs> And that's even more apparent when they actually have guys like Zuckerberg in the Congress and they fucking start asking them questions and like, are these the motherfuckers that are running our country? And like, how do they not right. know the largest distribution of in information? How do you not know about Twitter and Facebook? Like you should have people in Congress, just like you would a business where you have these social media managers, people that are tracking social media, not fucking FBI not the because that's bias, right? You need people like learning the inside operations of everything that goes down and teaching these old folks what the fuck they need to do, just like you would a CEO of a company has a social media department and that social media department reports to the CEO and says, hey, dude, listen, this is trending right now. We should hop on this bandwagon. Like you got to have experts up top because the same thing with AI. I've talked about this before on my podcast about two podcasts ago where AI is not catching up to the laws and the government, and that's a problem. That's a huge problem, especially as a, a new father. I worry that by the time, you know, she's 15 years old, her, even if I keep her off the phone, which I'm going to try, but her friends, they're going to have phones. Like, unless every parent gets on the same page and says, no phones until they're 18. They're not. They're not going to. So no. eventually her face is going to be out there and who knows what AI is going to be like in 15 years. But if our government doesn't get on those laws and protect our citizens, we have a problem and they're not going to learn that stuff. It's not like they're going to take a master class of AI on their free time. You know? Yeah, no, they're not. That's, that's a really scary thing. I think that's why a lot of people actually like Donald Trump too, was because yes, he did, you know, we say mean tweets. Um, sure. He, he was, he is an old guy that understands social media. Yeah, he's on social. He utilizes it himself with his own fingertips. Yeah. Whereas Joe Biden has, I don't know what her name is, Jean Paul Gaultier, whatever the fuck her name is. Um, I I, I, I can't say I I I miss um circle back um chick. Yeah. But um, <laughs> never thought I'd say that. But yeah, I mean, Joe Biden has somebody who's part of his social media team that's posting these things for him. Donald Trump didn't need to do that. He still doesn't no. have to do that. He's He's with it. He's on it. He snapped. I mean, he knows uh, with the AI thing, dude, that's really dangerous because yeah. they can frame and make any one of us look like we did something mm -hmm. with our right. face, pictures, videos. It's super scary. It's sick. It's I don't know. I, I watched a video. I don't know if you've seen it where it was a, a video of the um, truths are um the truth about AI and it was like a movie theater and there's two parents sitting in there and then the, the daughter pops up her. yep, and they're like, hi, it's me, but from in 10 years. And I'm like, Oh, like you want to cry, dude, that was an intense video. That was really intense. I'll definitely, I'll add that link into this and into this video when I clip it. But yeah, that that's wild because again, they could take our face right here and I've seen it happen already in 2024. And you can create a video just based off a minute of a conversation. So, you know, this is where our laws need to catch up. Like, you know, it's it's apparent. I think they actually might have passed this to where do eyewitness testimonies count anymore? I don't think they do. Right. Are you familiar with that? 
See, so that that finally happened just the last couple of years because we now know that our memory sucks. Like we can't remember shit. It's just it's you can constantly tell yourself one thing for years and years and years. You'll actually believe it. So that means you could pass a lie detector test. So that is just bullshit. So we need to like think of a way uh, from a government standpoint, like blood evidence is the only way that you can be convicted, you know, something like that, because video evidence now is, is dog shit. It doesn't do right. anything, especially right. with deep fakes and AI, but we got to get ahead of that because if we don't, I don't know, it's scary know. to think. I know. And, you know, speaking of like, uh, of Trump, cause, uh, it is fascinating. I'll probably vote for him again, but who do you think is going to be his v VP? Cause I, everybody keeps asking me this. Yeah. I was thinking about that. I honestly think that would be a good pick. Yeah, I don't think it's going to be Vivek. I think it's going to be Tim Scott. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I, 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 I would like Christy Nome because I really like her. I might have mm -hmm. a slight crush on Christy Nome too. That's well, who doesn't? Neither. Yeah, that's neither here nor there. But um, I, he, but she's just not as active as people like Tim Scott, Vivek Ramaswamy. Like you mm -hmm. see those, pro, like they're the most two dominant that you always see doing podcasts and things. So I feel like. If he was going to choose somebody, it would be somebody who's active all the time. And you're always yeah. seeing those two specifically, always in either the media. I mean, Vivek was doing a live last night from some podcast show. Like, it's people yeah. that are constantly active. Christy Noem, I absolutely adore her. I think she's got it. She definitely can be VP. But I don't see her active. So I don't know that he would choose somebody that's not active. Yeah, you got to be active for sure. Although... That's why I was kind of excited about Vivek more than anybody. And Tulsi Gabbard, I really liked her too, even though she was more independent than anything. But um, I, I like... I'm just worried. I'm sorry. I'm just worried mm -hmm. when I see Fox News pushing someone. Then like you know. they have been Nikki Haley. Yeah. Like they've been just... Nikki Haley. Nikki, she's on there every day. Three times yeah. a day. Nikki, and I'm like, why though? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and you notice they only started doing that when Tucker went on his own. So it begs the question, maybe they're really hurting ratings wise. So I don't think they were as corrupt as CNN two years ago, but I think now, I don't know, maybe they're getting some checks up top to push certain I mean, candidates. They were kind of eating crow last night too. I saw them. Yeah. <laughs> Cause they really were pushing for Nikki Haley. Right. Right. And they're Which, like, Oh, we the just called it. She won Vermont. Was yeah. There seven people in Vermont. Come on. Yeah. You know, like, but they never, they used to never do that. Aside from Trump, you know, when he was in office, they really never pushed candidates. It's fascinating, you know, because I love what Tucker's doing. Um, and again, fan of Tucker or not, doesn't really matter. And this has always been my stance for years is like, if you're more objective with everything, um, because there is such thing as like, okay, I could also love my guns, but maybe there needs to be stricter laws. You know, I don't know. Like, maybe. Maybe we need to do something. You know what I mean? Like, again, we go back to that amendment hasn't changed since 1776. ARs weren't a thing back then, right? Like, and again, as a guy who has guns and believes in them and loves shooting them and collects them, like, the point is, I don't know, in 50 years, what the fuck's going to come out? You know, should we get ahead of these laws beforehand? Like, it's okay to have both opinions, don't be so matter of fact of everything. And that's what I dig about Tucker more than anything is, of course, he's more right, but he's, he's always out to find what I think is the truth is just good, good journalism because that didn't exist. Um, I don't even know, probably for the last couple of decades, it just hasn't been around, you know, it's always about the buck. And I feel like him going on his own, he's got, you know, more skin in the game, kind of like Elon, you know, like you're out on your own, you're on your own Island. You kind of have to do the right thing. You're forced to because all eyes are on you. You got to do it. And I don't know if it's going to be like that forever, but I love the interview that he did with Putin. Um, and the fact that this guy has been linked to killing numerous people, I'm surprised he wasn't more scared than what he was. Like, I thought he was going to be shaking. He has in that. no fear. He, he really doesn't. Fear. It's crazy. Uh, but <laughs> one thing, uh, the last thing I wanted uh, to get with you on is in terms of Trump, right? Because again, we, we've talked about him before. We all know that he's got some issues. Everybody does. He's not perfect. Um, as a guy that will vote for him, and I, I believe that he is the best candidate that we have right now, do you find it concerning 
that he is the best candidate. Meaning, like, why isn't there more people with that ideology and that passion? Because if me or you wanted to run for president, ain't not, none of the big boys going to back us up. Yeah. It's all, it's all the club. It's the club. It's the good old boys. Yeah. It's who's going to donate and fund you. That's yeah. what it's all about. No, that's why I like Trump, Trump because, of course, he has donors. Of course, there's people that donate to him but sure. for his campaign. But the man is a self-made man. Yeah. He's a family man. He's like everybody else. He was like, that's why we voted for him. That's my Italian family that yeah. never voted. I'm first generation born here. So think of it. My parents were born in Italy. Mm. Okay. So my dad never voted in election in his life. Wow. Until the first time he voted for Donald Trump. And he voted again. And he can't wait to go again. And they, yeah. and my whole family is that way. And this man sparked something in all of us. And I think that people don't realize that. What he sparked in everybody was he opened our eyes to corruption. And that's why they want to get rid of him. And that's why they still want to get rid of him. Is he corrupt? I don't think he's corrupt. I think that he used the system as everybody else did. And I think that they're biting him in the ass because they don't want to be exposed with worse shit. Right. Yeah. And so I've been around that family and I have been in that circle. There is nothing but positive vibes for me that comes out of any of those people. And mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now that a lot of people don't know Donald Trump has been giving so much money to organizations that are fighting, fighting for um, for gay and lesbian people in places like the Middle East to have the freedoms that we have here in this country. And nobody fucking knows that. Really? Wow. Nobody knows that. He is trying to have it decriminalized worldwide he's been trying to do that since he was president he lowered aids and hiv medication for i mean obviously most mostly the lgbtq whatever all the letters are um community and he's just not a racist homophobic man he's just not i i am it's something that the media spins yeah. and uh and that's what i have to say about that yeah, man. Listen, I, I agree. I mean, I think I, I do like him because he isn't a politician, you know, and and he is human. You know, like everyone compares the presidency, uh, I think, at least most of my liberal friends, to Obama. And don't get me wrong. It, pol, pol, if you don't know anything about politics, if you're listening, put the policies aside because all his policies were garbage and have ruined this country. But aside from that, you look at like him as a whole for eight years. He's he's the spitting image. But he is such a great speaker. And he, he was cool. I, he, he was, was cool. so cool. Dude, he was like, I think a lot of people envision that that needs to be our president. But what you don't understand is sometimes to be the president, you got to be an asshole. And if you want to get things done, sometimes you can't play nice. And sometimes you have to be a little bit, a little snaky, keep your friends close, keep your enemies closer, like our Italian friends say. But yeah. sometimes you have to do that and you can't be tied down and corrupt to one side or the other. And I think that's a big reason why Trump is, has been so successful and what attracted me to him more than anything is because he's just a regular dude, you know, and, and he's going to make mistakes. He's going to send out racist tweets and stupid tweets. And, but it's probably because he just sent them out without thinking about it. Are they racist uh, tweets though? Well, according to the media, yeah. Yeah. And you know, he and, and you know, when he had a conversation with somebody's oh, I grabbed him I grabbed her by the whatever. Okay, listen. The pussy? Yeah. 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 Listen to me right now, America. <laughs> I being a gay man, I've hung out with straight men, groups of straight men, and I've hung out with groups of straight women before. Okay. Both average normal American groups of of separate sexes is just as fucking nasty when they're all together as he was when he thought that he was just having a conversation with another, another dude for sure it didn't bother me in the slightest i really don't care <laughs> i think it's hilarious my buddies yeah. say worse and show worse and do worse so for me it was like <laughs> yeah. i'm gonna go for it three more times <laughs> which is what what happened with most of america the media right. took it and was like oh it's misogynistic is it yeah yeah, and that's the great thing about it is he makes mistakes, and I kind of dig that. You know, the difference between, like, 
him and you watch mass media talk about Biden is Biden is walking around like a freaking Roomba bumping into things. And the media doesn't cover that at all. But when Trump is just being a dude in front of his friends saying pussy, he's an asshole and he's a horrible pick for president. That, that's a dude. That's a regular guy. And I actually trust that guy more than I trust the guy that does nothing wrong. Again, like Obama. Obama, he's he's too good. And it's something up with that. That's what I thought about the debate. He's too good. He seemed a little Obama 2.0 a little bit tonight. He kind of did, yeah, but just good at TikTok. Yeah, I agree. So, no, I think I, I think that's some good points, and I think if Americans kind of open up a little bit and understand that, hey, listen, it's, sometimes it's okay to get away from that, like, button up the tie presidential thing. We're in a position now in, in the world where we need a dude that's a little rough around the edges. You know what I mean? We need a guy that's going to stand up and fight for America and not just bend over backwards and— can't form full sentences. So yeah, I agree. <laughs> well, Ant, dude, listen, this was this was a blast, man. I could probably talk to you for a while, so maybe I'll have you on again. Um, I would love that. I would yeah, love that. That was fun. If you can let everybody know where they could find you on social media and what you got going on, digging the hat, by the yeah. way. Thank you. So this will be a new conservative Ant merch drop on officialpatriotgear.com. Ooh. Go grab that March twenty second. We drop a new Ant line every month. Once it goes, it goes. So you have to get it when it drops. Um, conservative ants on all platforms. You can find me on every single platform. And uh, May 16th, I will be in Staten Island, New York. We are doing a trafficking awareness event. So stay on the lookout for that flyer. All the proceeds will be going to organizations that help to catch these assholes. So epic. Ant, thanks so much for what you do, man. Keep up the good work. And uh, we will talk soon, brother. All right, brother. See you. Bye.